Hi, welcome back. I'm Chris Sikora, and I'm going to step you through the midterm on AutoCAD 2022. And this is for CAD 118, which is a 3D Solids class for AutoCAD. So let's begin. Our goal is to create the drawing that you see here and then export that out as a PDF and submit it through D2L. Now, to find all this, some of you can see on D12 clearly that it's there, but if you wanted to, you could go to vertanu1.com. You could go to the exams tab up here and then find the blue button AutoCAD Solids Midterm. That will bring up the midterm and it comes up vertical like this. Now, here's the thing if you want to rotate this so you could actually read these better, just hit download and then once it pops up, open it and it should launch in your one of your browsers and then you have the ability to just right click and there's rotate and rotate counterclockwise will do the trick all right so we're looking at if we look at the steps here there's three model the bottle that's worth 100 points model the cap another 100 points and recreate the medicine bottle assembly drawing that's what you see here there is extra credit for 20 points right here if you put in the isometric view and I'll show you how you can do that at the very end and we'll also do a little prep for that but let's begin I've already rotated this as I downloaded it and you can see this is the first drawing drawing a the bot the bottle Now the bottle is very basic there's no threads on it but basically what you have here is a two and a half inch high uh, main part and then a neck that's a half inch high and then these are the diameters the main part is two inches diameter and the uh, 1.5 for the neck so let's and then it gets shelled out as well as you put radiuses on or fillets see here the radius point one typical that's one two and three you want to make sure you put those in before you put in the typical wall thickness which is going to be the shell command just going to push that over here. So go to new all right you're going to pick the AutoCAD 3D template hit open and I don't want what's popping up there in the store and I could get rid of this temporarily okay now what I would recommend going to the home button up here and then clicking on top also make sure that your visualize and 3d tools are there if they're not remember you could right click go to show tab and make sure you check them on 3d tools and visualize because you will need those let's go to the visualize tab and under realistic I'm actually going to set this to 2d wireframe and now we'll begin go to home and I would turn on the snaps now for the snap mode over here the O snaps basically just make sure you have center midpoint endpoint and quadrant helps in this case so make sure you select those two now over here hit the little arrow underneath circle and we're gonna start with the center diameter because that's what the print calls out is a diameter not a radius so click on that go to the center where the origin is, or the WCS as you see there, and you'll see zero and zero to the right of your pointer. Click, drag out, and go ahead and type in two. Hit enter. So now we have our two inch diameter. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go back to the home button here, and we could go to 3D tools. Now you may actually wanna go to visualize. Some of you who have difficult See, looking at 2D wireframe, it's not the easiest thing to see at first. So you might want to go to Shades of Gray or Conceptual. Now you could go to 3D Tools, and that's purely optional. You don't have to do that. Go to Press Pull, get within the boundaries of this box, click and drag it up, and go ahead and type in 2.5. Hit Enter. Go ahead and hit the Home button again, and now we should be able to see that. Now I'm going to turn off the snap we don't need that right now okay now what we're going to do is go back to the home tab go to the circle button once again make sure it's on center diameter and now we want to find the center point notice it doesn't find it easily you have to go to the edge here and then get to one of these little 
diamonds, the green diamond, and then follow it. I didn't click. I'm just following the inference line. Now look at that, I lost it. Uh, it took a little too long there. Uh, and there, we should get right to the center. Once you see that circle that's green up here, click, and you found the center. All right, now at this point, we could go ahead and just type in 1.5. Enter. And you could use the 3D tools, press pull, get inside there, click, drag it up, make that point 0.5. And as we've learned before, sometimes these merge together, which that's what we want. And I've had it where it hasn't, and I'm not entirely sure why sometimes that occurs. It might be operator error, most likely. Okay, now we're going to go to the fillet edge. So click on fillet edge. And down below here, select radius. Go ahead and type in point 0.1. Hit enter, and now we could go ahead and start selecting the bottom edge here, this edge right here, and this edge here. You do not fill at the top edge. Hit enter, and enter. Now we could shell it. So let's go to the shell command, and select this body, and then select this top face, and and actually, in this case, it removed the edges, which that's not what I wanted. So I'm actually going to um, undo that. All right, I want this top face. That top face is what we want removed, and it should cause the geometry to change color back to gray. And now once we have that, hit Enter. And Enter again. Oops, uh, darn it. It's uh, move, move your pointer off that geometry. Okay, now go ahead and just type in point one for the wall thickness. Hit enter, enter, and enter. And there it is. So that's worth 100 points right there. That's 30% of your test. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and build the cap. And we could build the cap right on top of it. But before we do that, let's do a little, uh, let's create some layers. Now, the layers just help with manageability a little bit here. So if we go to Home and click on Layer Properties, let's bring this out here so we can see this, and go to New, actually this first one, click on that, zero, wait a second and click another time. Oh, uh, won't let us rename it, that's okay. Let's just go to New, and now this one we could rename it. Let's go ahead and type in, that will be the bottle. And go ahead and change the color if you like, like click on this little color button right here next to print and select, I'm going to go with a blue like that. That looks pretty good. All right, now I'm going to go to new. Now go ahead and type in cap and click on the color swatch. And this cap, I'm going to make this yellow. And you could choose any color that you'd like. And then finally, now this is for the extra credit. If you don't want to do the extra credit, you don't have to. It's just 20 extra, uh, extra points. If you want to try it, go ahead. One more new layer, and we'll call it cap two. And let's change that one to red. And again, any color that you would like to use, you may. And now we want to activate, in this case, the cap. So click here. And actually, I got to double click on that. There we go. So we get the little green check mark for the cap because we're going to model the cap next. So hit the X. All right. So to model the cap, now the cap is a bit more complex. Let's take a look at the drawing. The cap has a couple steps. We have a 1.8 diameter, a 1.5 for the neck. Uh, they go. The 1.8 goes up to a half inch. The 1.5 goes only 0.4 deep because it's 0.5 minus 0.1. All right, so that's 0.4 from here, from here to here. This is 0.5 from here to here. And then we have this, which is 0.1 from here to here, and then we put a fillet on. So let's go ahead and build that out. Now, there, there's a pattern as well. There are 100 thousandths diameter posts that we're going to put in there, and, and we're going to have 50... 50 places. So to do that, let's go to the circle tool and again go with diameter. Hover over this edge when you get that little quadrant to appear. 
you can move over directly and let's see here I'm not getting it oh I had it right there just a second let me using my wheel to actually get that maybe I'll try it off of this quadrant it's a little tricky and there are different techniques oh goodness come on I've got a gaming mouse today and so it's really high precision and I'm not actually getting the center for some strange reason let's try and get it from here there we go okay click and drag this out now we're gonna make this 1.8 or I'm sorry um, yeah 1.8 hit enter <clears throat> okay now we're going to go ahead and we are not going to use under 3d tools we're not going to use the press pull although we could if we were to hide that we just don't want it to accidentally merge with the bottle so go to extrude select this geometry here hit enter and it needs to go in this case it's going to go point see because that's the top point four down We'll cut the hole last, by the way. Okay, and now we'll actually go back to home and let's use our layer properties again. We could, um, you know, we could actually just set this on there. So click on the bottle and then right click on it and go to quick properties. Now, sometimes you might have to hit escape a couple times to get quick properties. But when you go to quick properties, basically we want to set it to our specific layer that is the bottle layer. Okay, and then you could close this. All right, and now it will probably stay blue because that is the color we chose. Uh, probably not such a good color now that I look at it because it looks like the selected color, but that's okay, we'll figure it out. Now, on this list, let's go ahead and hide or turn off that layer. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and select this face. And um, actually, we're gonna go back to center diameter Oh, you know what? We don't need to do that. I'm sorry. Go to 3D Tools and press Pull. We need to pull this up. Let's see here. Um, one additional, or 0.1, or 100 thousandths high. So drag it up, make it 0.1. And there's a dozen ways to model this, by the way. This is just one method I'm showing you. All right. Now let's go Home, Circle, Zoom up here. Remember, with the middle wheel, you can actually hold it down and move your mouse left, right, up, and down and zoom uh, to, to center it. All right, again, I'm going to use this as a reference. Go across with that line of inference, and I should get to center. Click, drag this out. This one's going to be 1.9, so just a little bit wider. And we could use the 3D tools, press pull again. And let's make sure we get select that outer edge, click and drag it up. And this just gets at 0.1. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put the fillet on right away because this is the number one in all the classes I have for different CAD software. So this is the number one missed entity and almost everyone knows how to put a fillet in. So let's go to radius, make sure it's set to 0.1 and hit enter. And now select that edge, hit enter and enter. All right, so we've got that. Let's uh, rotate this. So shift in the middle wheel, if you hold it down, you can look at the underside there. Now we still have this 0.5 here um, off of that neck of the bottle. Uh, we could theoretically use that, I suppose, but I'm not, I think that's a 0.1 based off of it. But let's go ahead and let's select uh, the circle tool again. Let's actually put it on that surface. I guess, suppose we could just move it. That would be easy too. I just don't trust uh, to do that. I haven't tested it out. So I'm gonna move this to the center. Oops, let's rotate that. You know what, let's go to the isometric here. Let's just see this one more time. And I'm actually going to wipe that off of there. I'm going to hit escape. I'm just going to get rid of this. I don't need that. We could, Again, we could move it. I suppose we could. Ah, let's just get rid of it and redraw it. Okay. And I want to make sure, I'm going to turn off the 
kind of visualize the shades of gray. And that's probably because perspective has an adverse reaction or effect there that I think is causing tr trouble. All right, let's go back to circle. There it is. Come on. All right, so what I did, just because I was having difficulty with that, I went back to visualize, and I set that to conceptual. I suppose you could set it to any of them, but for some strange reason, I'm just having some challenges. And this might be due to my mouse, quite honestly. The precision of my mouse is a little strange. Okay, I'm going to go back to center diameter and infer to this edge. And we should get to the center, and there it is. Okay, and that's what I was looking for. Okay, so now that we have that, I could go ahead and type in 1.5. And now we could go to the 3D tools, press pull, select that geometry, pull it up, 0.4, hit enter, and it should cut that out. Now, if it doesn't cut it out, and I've seen it do strange things like that, depending upon the order that you've created this or if things aren't merged. Remember, you could use the extrude button and then do subtraction from it. So there, there are other options. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, let's uh, go to the bottom here, and escape. And we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete this, little circle there, we don't need that. And from here, I could, I could go ahead, let's see. Yeah, we'll just go to the home diameter and infer to any of the quadrants, like right there, that's perfect. Click, drag out a small circle and make a point one. Now we could go ahead and extrude that. So go to insert, I'm sorry, not insert, uh, 3D tools and we'll use extrude. Select the geometry hit enter, move it forward. Now it looks as though we could snap it to that top edge, but I just want to be on the safe side, 0.5. Just put in the value. And now we could hit escape. Now select that geometry and let's pattern it now. So we go back home, go to array and find polar pattern. Okay, and we have to find the center and the center should appear. You should get a little center that appears there, click. And now look at that, we've got it. Go ahead and type in 50 instances and make sure associative is turned off. I've seen associative do strange things when we try and unite it later on. So uh, keep that as is uh, off, hit drag. Okay, let me do that one more time. Uh, control Z, I hit enter too quickly there. Apparently didn't like, I should. let's try that again. Select the geometry. Go to Array, select the center, and we want 50 instances. Hit Enter, and there we go. All right, now we could go ahead and hit Close Array. Now we're going to unite those, so let's go to the 3D Tools, go to Union, select in the center here. And it looks as though my lid isn't united either. So let's see. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Now we could just, uh, once that's selected, hit enter. Let's try that again. Let's go to union, select that. Click and drag a fence to surround everything, hit enter. And now look at that, it, it united it. Now it's interesting because I've done this several times before and there's been times when it just doesn't unite so if it doesn't you're still okay just keep moving forward you could still make the drawing and still get an a on the if it doesn't unite sometimes there's uh, things that occur and we're, we're new users in this case for the solids but we have our cap now now let's go ahead and go home go back to layer properties we could turn the bottle layer back on. And in fact, actually, before I turn that bottle layer back on, I want to change the color. I do not like it. it looks like the same color that when we select things. So change that. Let's bring the bottle back. And now we could go ahead and let's activate cap 
two. So double click on that little area there. Um, I think we should be able to, and uh, we better activate cap one. I'm not sure if this is gonna work the way I'm hoping, but let's go ahead and select the cap. Now hit X. Now go ahead and select the cap. Go to copy. Click on like the center point here and drag up and try and stay centered and drag it about a little over an inch high. Remember you could zoom out if you need to with the scroll. Click and then move over to the right here and hit escape. So we've got a copy now. Now click on that, right click, and we could go ahead and go to quick properties and select the different layers. So instead of the cap layer, we want cap two. And now we can see it's red. And I'm actually gonna turn off under visualize, I'm gonna actually change to realistic. All right, so there we have our geometries. And we're just gonna hide also, if we go back home, go to the layer properties, or we could actually just go right here and hide cap two, turn off the light bulb. And there's our bottle. So now we're at about uh, 200 points. So we're near, nearly done. We just have to make the drawing. And at this point, I would go ahead and save it. But now go down to where it says model here on the tab, right click and select from template. And we're gonna make the drawing. So click on AutoCAD 3D, hit, oh, not, I'm sorry, go to, um, Hold on a second. Right click on that from template and sheet sets, double click on that. There we go. And we want manufacturing Imperial. Hit open and just hit okay. Now this is a C size and you'll see it appear right over here. And we could just with the middle wheel, hold down the middle wheel and center it yourself and maybe scroll up if you want. Now we can go over here to layout the tab and base from model space. And see the A means AutoCAD, I is for inventor, which this is not an inventor class. So anyhow, all right, now go ahead and locate where you wanna put this. We'll put this right about there, click. And now on, let's see, hidden lines, change it to we could keep it shaded, I guess. It's not formally accepted yet, but it does make for a cool looking portfolio piece. I sometimes I'm nervous about suggesting it, but you could do that. We could do um, just visible lines. Let's go ahead and visible lines. And then you'll see, let's see here, uh, visibility, tangent edges, and we do want to display tangent edges and I do recommend them foreshortened. So hit yes and yes, and then go ahead and hit exit and exit. Now drop the part below it, click, drag to the upper right here. You'll get an isometric view, click, and then right click and enter. There we go. Now to move these, you just click on them and you get that center and you could just drag it, like drag this one over here, click. You could have the ability to hit that little arrow and you could scale to different scales, but we're gonna keep it as is. I'm gonna hit escape. Now I'm gonna pre-select this view and I'm gonna go to section, click on section and click on that view again. Now we could infer to this point, get a little bit below it. And actually I'll zoom up so you can see this. See, I get that little triangle, and but I'm yet my pointer is a little bit below the actual model. Click, drag it straight through, get about the same height above it. Click, and then right click, enter, and it should create our section view right there. Click, and go ahead and hit exit. All right, let's select that view, and let's go to detail. Now right inside here somewhere, when you get that little triangle at the midpoint, that's a good place. Click, drag out the circle, keep the B off of the model. Click, and then just drag that right there. Click and exit. All right, so we have our general views there. Okay, now the bill of materials. Let's go to All right, so now we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna move some of these around just to make a little bit more room. Let's get this over here. 
All right, just spread it out. Now we're going to go and add the bill of materials. And to do that, you go to annotate the tab. And oh, you know, what? before we do that, let's get the center mark in here. Click on center mark. I forgot to add it right here. Click, and that should add the center mark there. Okay, now we could go on to table. Now for the table wizard that you or the insert table area here, you see there's a start from empty table table. We're going to go ahead and just leave it at that. You want preview turned on. This is what it's going to look like. You want to set your columns right here, columns and rows to three, your data rows to two, because we have just two parts here. We have a bottle and a cap. And then the row height one for the size is fine. And the column width two and a half is just fine. Go ahead and hit OK. And I'll move this to the upper left. Now you'll see it's actually showing up in yellow. And that's because I still have that layer on. Uh, we could later on change that if we'd like. In fact, um, once, yeah, once we get more information in here. So let's zoom up to that. And the first thing we're going to add is uh, we'll call this parts list. So double click in there and try and use caps. All right. And then this next one right here, double click inside there. And this is going to be the part number and double click in this one here and I had to like triple click in there and this is going to be the description and then double click in here and this is going to be the QTY or short for quantity now click on this section here and we're going to type in part number one and then down below oh darn it it uh, didn't center it that's okay we just click on it and let's go to there's uh, justify okay so make sure you click on that and under justification here we're going to go to middle center all right now we could just click below it now and type in two select that make sure it's middle center again all right now the description the first one's going to be the bottle and the order doesn't really matter as long as the part numbers match with the balloons that we're going to create i go ahead and click over here below it this is going to be the cap now, interestingly enough, those are ended up justified, so I'm not sure why the part number, probably because part numbers could vary in length and such. And the quantity, let's see. I have a feeling this one will not justify by itself. Let's see. Yep, make sure it's middle center. So there's one of the cap and one of the bottle. All right, now, if we select that, um, see here we could go to quick properties and I'm looking to I was actually hoping to get that on a different layer Let's see well, I'll have to figure that out in a minute anyhow um, no worries if it, if it doesn't stay on the same layer I'm going to start working though on a different layer. So if we go home here, let's not put it on the cat. Let's go back to layer zero. All right. Now the balloons, you'll see right over here, you have leader. Okay. And so we're going to go ahead and put those leaders on. So if you go over here to the leaders button on above annotations, oops and go ahead and click on leader. Now if you go to annotation down below it, you'll see here there's a picture of the leader and go to standard. We want standard on, but then go to manage multi-leaders because by default, this does not come up with the circle. So manage multi-leaders. You're gonna go to modify and go to content, set this instead of M text to black and then set the source block to circle and hit OK, and then hit Set to Current, and Close. Now, we could go ahead and click on that, 
and so, um, now you have the ability to leader arrow head first or leader landing first. Um, I'm going to go leader landing first and click right about there and then select this edge. And then up here we have to click where it says tag numbers. In this case, the cap is actually part number two. Hit enter and then hit OK. And it should appear right there. Let's go ahead and add another one. So click, you could hit enter again. And we should be able to just select that. Oops, I went backwards. I'm going to hit escape. Enter. Content first. Click over here. Let's put in part number one. Enter and OK. And then select that part. There we go. And so that's, that's how we create the balloons. And then below here, you want to change some of these things inside here. So for example, just double click. Oh, there we go. It brings up the attribute editor and the sheet name. Uh, click on that and then go down here and we'll call that midterm 118. Hit apply. OK. Oh, you know, we want to get this one too. Sorry. Um, con contract number, actually just click in here and just delete that. Let's see what else we have. Um, hit apply. And where it says Imperial, like the file name, let's put our name on that instead of file name. And so what we could put here is we could put a, a name down, hit apply. And I think this one, we could get rid of that too. This is just going to make the drawing look better. And let's get rid of this sheet serial number too. Delete that. Okay, so for some reason it didn't want to change that. That might be a link though. Let's check. Let's go back there and put in my name. Put in your full name just so, uh, actually you don't need to for this, but if you're taking the class on site, put in your full. Okay, there it worked. All right, so basically that completes it um, without the extra credit. What I want to do is show you the extra credit in just a moment, but uh, we want to print this out. So go to the A button, go to export PDF, and go to current layout. And we should be able to just save that. I probably want to save it to your desktop. Okay, and then just double check to make sure that that looks good. And here is mine, and it turned out great. Okay, I'm not too worried about the size uh, as long as you get that out to me. Go ahead and put that or submit it into the midterm link on D2L, and you're all set. That will give you full. Uh, 300 points. Now, those of you who want to see how to actually create the uh, extra credit, extra credit is pretty difficult, and I've had trouble with it, in fact, but this is one of the parts of the curriculum, which is really pretty neat. So let's take a look at that. All right, so for the 20 points extra credit, I went ahead and I moved some of the views over so I can make the view that's exploded. Let me get those over a little bit. Further. When you move this view, by the way, you'll see that the arrowheads don't always move with it. So you have to click on those, click and then release and then connect again. And you could also move these from these squares here. Click on that square, release it, and then you could drag it in. Same with this one. Click here, release, click on that square, release, and then drag it over. Click to drop it. Hit escape. Okay, now go to layout. Go to insert view and it brings us back to our can our bottle. Now 
in order to get this with the proper layers, we that's what we want to do. We want to set go to home and set the layers up as such. So we will turn off cap two. Now I've had this where it changes the actual one of the views on the the drawing too. So let's cross our fingers. I've had it where it has it, and I'm not sure why. Again, it's operator error, I'm sure why it's done it before in the past, and sometimes I've been successful with it, and I, I can't figure out why. All right, but now let's go back to the layout. Now I'm going to go ahead and click here, and you want to make an envelope around it as tight as you can. You don't want it really big because it has to fit on your sheet, so click, and then hit enter. It should bring us here. Now that's okay. We just click over here to release it. Now when you double click on the view, you'll see 2D wireframe. Double click on that 2D wireframe text. Oh, there we go. And let's go with shaded with edges, or we could go realistic even. Right? Now we could also turn off, while that view is selected, turn off the grid. And now when you double click off of it, it will appear there. Now we could uh, click on the view again and change the scale here. Let's go with a one to one. And then there we are. Now you'll see here, it did end up exploding it in, the, in all the views. Now I've had it where it's unsuccessfully not. Um, again, I'm not sure why I did that, but if someone has an idea, please go ahead and send it. But if you even if you get this to where it fails as such, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and um, send it out to me because you gave it a shot and you got your 20 credit, extra credit points.